Hello and welcome to M&A Murders and Accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. We dig into what you need to know and how not to kill the sell of your business. Now here's our host, Rick J. Krebs, Mergers and Acquisitions Advisor. Hello, everyone. And this is Rick J. Krebs coming to you from the mountains of Heber City, Utah, talking things M&A, murders and accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. And I'm very excited and pleased to have our guest on the show today. Um, Scott is a friend of mine, and I, I think we've been working together, I want to say, over a year now, maybe going on two years as we've started the chapter. But uh, welcome, Scott. And uh, pleased to have yeah. you on our show. Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, I do think it's probably a couple of years now. Yeah, I think so. So a little bit of background. So as an M and A advisor, I um, was helping people, you know, sell their business, and and what I found was that we just needed to do exit planning. And um, I didn't know about EPI back then. So what I did is I wrote a book, "Sell Your Business by Design, Not by Default," just to influence people and start you know, start thinking about this exit, be thoughtful about it instead of just slapping it against the wall. And um, I discovered I discovered the Exit Planning Institute and and our values aligned completely. And I was so excited about that. And um, Scott is leading a nationwide, not just a charge, but I want to call it a revolution. Um, we're going to see probably trillions of dollars. Some people are saying 10 trillion, but we are going to see a transfer of wealth in the trillions of dollar range. And the dollars are changing hands from the business owners owning the businesses to selling the businesses. And the main reason for this is they're baby boomers who have um, built businesses and they're looking to retire. So with that, with that lead in, I'd like, first of all, Scott, to tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started. Scott is the president of the Exit Planning Institute, by the way. He is the man. He's leading the charge. And so I'm so excited to have him here today. He's got a smile and he's a little bit yeah. sheepish with the accolades, but, uh, you know, he's the man. And uh, yeah. so tell us well, about yourself, right. Scott, how you got started with this. Yeah. So kind of a, kind of actually you get a fun story, right? So I think it's one of the reasons that it, it allows us to kind of think and, and think creatively when it comes to exit planning strategy and approaches and concepts is that I'm an exited owner technically. Though I was a young man when I exited my first company, a very much a micro market owner operated uh, owner operator type company. But I exited it in 2010, and like many of your clients, perhaps uh, or or prospects that you're working with, Rick, a lot of the owners that we see, they go, "Man, uh, I don't really know what I I want to do next." Well, I had gotten out of that business, and really at the time I didn't know it in 2010, but it really was my first exit planning lessons. Uh, where I spent about 2010 to 11 kind of wandering around figuring out who I was. But what I think my dad, who created the methodology that would teach the value acceleration methodology, said, Scott, you know, I think you you let your business define you a little bit. And you should consider falling in love with business, not falling in love with that business. And so I ended up joining uh, my dad's uh, consulting firm where he was doing some M&A work, but primarily value growth consulting. And from there, I realized my dad had something pretty unique. And so we kind of flipped the model. We said, look, instead of working with business owners directly through the consulting firm, I think the missing link is a community of advisors that believe in the same things, talk the same language, and we can all approach the owner in the same way, uh, but also stay in our lanes and kind of do our expertise, our other stuff that we're really good at, but align and bring ourselves together. And my dad's methodology took those early concepts and put them into action and, and made it very methodical. So fast forward now to the fall of 2012, we buy the Exit Planning Institute. Dad is and was a certified exit planning advisor, just like you, Rick, uh, came through in 2008. In 2012, we bought it and then implemented the value acceleration methodology into the SEPA curriculum and thus into the market overall. So that's kind of my come from how I came in there. You Now uniquely I get to live the value acceleration methodology in my own business as a business owner with my dad while teaching it to a bunch of advisors as well. So it's kind of it's actually kind of a cool position to be in because it gives you more much, much more of like rapid involvement, right? Because we're testing it on our own business saying that works, that needs to be tweaked, that didn't work at all. So let's redo it so that we can teach it a different way to our advisors. So, but that's where we're at today. And I've been here 
since, since 2012 and at the, you know, in a, in a capacity of running the business since 2014. Great. So tell us a little bit more about EPI, the Exit Planning sure. Institute. You acquired it in 2012. What is this all about? What is this? Yeah. yeah so Exit Planning Institute is a institute or a community for really any professional advisor that is interested in developing a deeper and more holistic relationship with a business owner. And so particularly that's around how do we grow value in our business and then align three major elements, business, personal, and financial. So that's you. The Exit Planning Institute is likely a place for you to hang out. So we provide a credential, conferences, courses, community content all around this exit planning ecosystem. We have about 20,000 advisors across the United States and really across the globe. I think we're about maybe 13 or 14 other countries, primarily here in the U.S. Out of those 20,000, 5,000 people hold the Certified Exit Planning Advisor credential. The other 15,000 or so, I would say, kind of hang out in the community. They come to the conferences, they attend our chapters, they're interacting with content, webinars, podcasts, they're learning and then leaning on the Certified Exit Planning Advisor community when when they need somebody like that with those credentials to come in. But really an advisory community that I think is really driving the whole profession uh, for certainly the largest exit planning community, uh, at least in the United States today. It is. And it's fun to be part of the community, right? I, I just nice. love, love rubbing shoulders with like-minded individuals. And yep. uh, I like I like rubbing shoulders with people that are smarter than I am, right? I know that I don't know yeah, that all. <laughs> yeah, I, what I love about it, Rick, is like everybody has their professional expertise or designation. So when you go to the financial planning conference, it's all financial planners. When you go to the M and A conference, it's mostly M and A people, maybe some attorneys, maybe some at, like private equity folks, but mostly M and A people. When you go to the CPA society, it's all accounting folks. But when you get into the EPI community, you probably have at minimum nine different professional disciplines in, in the room at any given time. So to your point, not only can I sharpen my, my sharpen my knowledge in other areas that I might be a little bit weaker in or be challenged to think a little bit differently, but I could also likely do business with the person sitting right next to me because they don't do what I do. The one thing we have in common is typically we believe in the value of acceleration methodologies and its teachings. Uh, and we believe in helping business owners successfully exit companies, whether that's an internal or external transition. It's kind of agnostic in terms of that. It's about building better businesses and better, frankly, better owners and better people. Yep. Very good. Well, how has how has exit planning grown in the last 10 years since you got started? Man, you're catching me at a great time because we just uh, completed these. We, uh, well, so we do state of owner readiness research all across the United States, regionally, statewide, and then nationally. But well, we just completed the state of Minnesota uh, readiness project. And it what's nice about that one is that we did one in the state in 2017. And now we have comparable data really for the first time in a, in a, in a kind of a condensed region of the state of Minnesota. And it has changed, man. It is like, it's almost like a sigh of relief. Like, man, this work that we've been doing for the last 10 or 12 years is really paying off because owners are way more aware and way more ready uh, than they were six, seven years ago, at least in the state of Minnesota. And so I think right. the market has, is, is really changing. You mentioned at the top of the podcast, uh, uh, a $10 trillion opportunity. That was really based, you know, back on the book, the, the $10 trillion opportunity, which was one of the founding books of the Exit Planning Institute back in 2005. There they said about 60% of the privately held companies in the United States today were owned by baby boomers. And that represented this $10 trillion wealth transfer, the largest transfer of wealth in the world ever, in, ever in history. And now if you look, COVID had a big swing that 2020, 2021, 2022. If you look at the statistics now, that 60% owned by baby boomers is now down to 51%. And then the next generation of owners are emerging. So 43% now are owned in, in the research that we find between 36 years old and then 57 years old. So that embraces the top end of the millennials and then the entirety of of the of Generation X. And why I think that's important for people to grasp is that they think a lot differently than the baby boomers think. It's not good or bad, it's just different. So we as a professional advisory community, how are we kind of pivoting our mindset to help the next generation of owners who I think, and it shows in the state of Minnesota research, 
are a little bit more open to exit planning conversations. Why? If you're somebody in your 40s or early 50s, you likely uh, have a good knowledge. You have it, like an Investopedia study said 83% of the Gen X generation indicated that they felt uh, very confident in their financial planning and investing knowledge. They're pessimistic in their investing. They feel like they need to go at it their own because they can't rely on any government aid. So you combine that with they yearn for a, a, a work-life balance, this blend between family and personal and business. They believe in working smarter, not harder through the use of technology, and their core value is their time. And so you take all of that and you understand the methodology. At least in our world of VPI, the value acceleration methodology, or what I would call a value acceleration-centric lifestyle, gives them that exactly. So no wonder they're a little bit more inclined to talk about exit planning because it's a uh, you know, it's the it's the missing key that unlocks the door to more freedom and, and a decentralized owner. So I'm excited for the future as we see finally the the baby boomers starting to transition and hopefully in a good and positive way, given the work that we've done over the last 10 or 20 years. And then we can bring up the next generations of owners to give them even more profitable businesses, more more holistic lifestyles and companies that are highly valuable and good times for bad. So you could hopefully maybe sense my excitement being a guy that is 40 uh, and and I, you know, this is kind of a cool market to be in now because we've educated the boomers and we're seeing them finally transition. And then the generations coming behind them truly accept the stuff that you and I talk about. So they're like, man, let's do some business together because this is going to help me. So I'm like, what, what, a, what a great time to be working with business owners is what I'm saying. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I can't wait to get my hands on that study when it gets released. So I'm excited about that. Come out. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be out this fall. Right. So uh, one of the previous studies we I was looking at, the, the Colorado uh, exit, the yeah. business owner readiness survey, they were talking about the fact that most businesses, when they're taking to market, don't sell. Why is that? Do you think yeah. it's a lack of planning? Why? Why do you think that is? Yeah, I think traditionally it, it's it's it would be if I had to bet, right? It's just it's lack of planning. I think most owners, uh, and I don't care what generation or age you are, I think most owners are just trained in their entrepreneurial or business owner journey to focus on optimizing the business. And what that means, though, is that they're typically uh, optimizing net profits at the end of the day, making their business more operationally efficient, maybe thus driving uh, better uh, better P and Ls and better cash flow. But we all know that income doesn't necessarily equate directly to value. And so they might be doing the right things time and time again, give them what I call a very successful company, right? I give you there and, and talk to a business owner today and say, are you happy with what you've built? If they're a baby boomer, 65 years old, own a company for 20, 25, 30 years, they'd be like, hell yeah, I definitely like, definitely like I'm proud of what I do. Uh, I got great people, great employee. I got great customers. I have a lot of relationships with them. You know, I have a couple of nice cars. My kids are well off. Like, yeah, I feel pretty good and proud of what I built. But then they take their company to market and they're kind of slapped across the face because somebody's called their baby ugly. So for 30 years, they concentrated on making a company very year over year successful. What they didn't concentrate on is making that company very significant. And for us, a significant company means that you're highly val valuable and transferable, attractive and ready, and you're aligned to the business owner's business, personal, financial goals. That combination or that definition really gives you uh, a more significant company and one that can and that's transferable. So to your direct question, they're not selling because they're concentrating on being successful, not being significant. They're not concentrating on value. They're concentrating on generating great income and they don't necessarily directly correlate. Love it. Absolutely love it. I was talking to a client just the other day and and uh, she'd been running all of these expenses through her business. I mean, everything that the house cleaners... <laughs> <laughs> the yard yeah, guys. We've seen it. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a lifestyle business. You know that you're making eight, 900,000 bucks a year, you know, net after paying everyone. But I said, I, I told her, and I, I kind of shudder to think that I told her this, but I'm like, you know what? Quit running all the junk through your business. Pay more in taxes. And I showed her, I'm like, you can pay, you know, 30 cents on the dollar for more taxes, or I can get you four times that in value or in, right. in selling price, you know, and I, I was on the phone. I just yeah. felt the light go on in her head. She's like, wait a minute. I pay a little more in taxes. I don't run the junk through my business. And then when we sell, you're telling me I'm going to make 400% more on my return. I'm like, absolutely. Yes. He'd never yes. thought of it. Right. It's just, just like, 
Well, that's just not their mindset, right? Yeah. 70% fail because they just have the wrong mindset and they don't know any better. It's really not their fault because again, no. they've just been trained as a business owner to run like a, a, a company that is, that's successful. They haven't really thought about, whoa, okay, 30 years from now, what am I, what am I doing with this? Because right at the end of the day, one of the other teachings we have, right, is that the business is just another asset inside of your financial portfolio, likely your biggest, but yeah, just another, just another investment that you have. They're not thinking about it like that. They're thinking about it as an operating entity that produces them $900,000 net each year. Yep. I love it. I call them from income generation to value acceleration. And you talked about successful to significant. Great, great way of putting it. And it, it is a mindset change, but as we can get business owners to think about this and advisors to think more about that, it just exponentially, not not incrementally or not in linear way, but in an exponential way, we're going to change their lives and we're going to change that selling price when they sell. Yeah. So absolutely love 100%. it. Yep. So shifting gears a little bit, tell me about sure. this SEPA. You've been talking about this SEPA designation. Tell me what that is. Sure. Yeah. So it's a certified exit planning advisor. So SEPAs are, again, kind of come from all walks of professional advisory. They could be M&A people, financial advisors, CPAs, attorneys, life coaches, uh, business growth consultants, kind of any of the traditional advisors that you would you would see. The commonality that they have is that they're all trained inside of what we call the value acceleration methodology. So those SEPAs, some will go out and actually do the exit planning work, meaning there are certainly deliverables along the, ex- the value acceleration methodology path. Uh, and some will go out and just have a deeper and more holistic conversation and then partner with people to go out and do the work. Again, the qualify, the really at the end of the day, what they both share is a common language and approach to help business owners grow value in their company and align business, personal, and financial goals, thus creating a more significant company and one that's likely going to sell for high multiples and have happy owners at the end of the day. So they learn that for a credentialing program called SEPA that is focused on that value acceleration methodology. And there's about nearly close to 5,000 certified exit advi- planning advisors in the market today. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. So uh, I have to I have to level with you. When I went through my SEPA courses, <laughs> and I've been through a lot of courses, right? I, I'm, a, I'm a CPA. Yeah, yeah. So we're the, like the king of yeah. tests and courses. I was thinking, well, I'm just going to kind of watch this and uh, I'll be answering emails and that while I'm listening with my other ear to the course. And you know what? I was riveted to the course. I have to tell you, and uh, I'm not just blowing smoke, but the course material is extremely valuable. And, uh, you know, on the M&A piece, I knew that, right? But all of the other pieces, I thought about them a little bit, but I not really dug deep and and dove deep into them. And I I really enjoyed the coursework and and what was taught and the people you you brought in. Um, great job with yeah, that. Thank you. I really appreciate that. We really tried to. So, and that's kind of the beauty of it too, right? Rick is that everybody, uh, is likely an expert in at least one of the 16 modules that you come yeah. to. So you're like M and A, like, I know that that's where I'm at. Right. But some of the Miller value acceleration methodology centric stuff might've been a little bit newer. Some of the deeper dive estate yeah. planning stuff is like, whoa, what's this all this, what's this stuff? At the end of the day, the SEPA program is very wide, not very deep. So what that means is that we're, we're not trying to make you an expert M&A person or estate planner, but we're trying to give you enough knowledge so you understand the holistic approach to exit planning and, and have, if you could have a deeper conversation with an owner and also then know a little bit more about the estate planning attorney so you know it's what, when it's the right time to bring that person in and kind of what their life's like as an estate planner. So so yeah, it uh, and then we have 11 different faculty members that teach those 16 modules. So you're getting each day like a diverse group of different advisors uh, or different instructors as well that are also advisors just like you that are practitioners out in the marketplace. So they have a very real kind of feel to them. They do. They have real wor- world knowledge and experience in what they're speaking about. Anyway, I, I really enjoyed that and I enjoyed the coursework and and um, I never enjoy tests too much. But <laughs> Yeah, me neither, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Me <laughs> <laughs> it was a great experience, but I, I'm ADD. You know, if I'm not interested, yep. you give me 30 seconds to, You're losing I'm me. out. Yeah, I'm I'm doing yep. something else. But I I was listening and I was there. So the CPIC designation, if you're an advisor, if you're a financial planner, attorney, CPA, um, you know, M&A guy, business broker, there's just so many different people that could benefit from this CPA designation and uh, and and what that is. So uh, anyway, I got to put a plug in for that because I, I – totally sold on the concept. 
<laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. So uh, I want to cover a couple things here. We were getting a little bit low on time, but I want to talk about the local chapters. So Exit Planning sure. Institute is it not just a nationwide, I'm learning that it's a worldwide organization now. And uh, and it also supports some chapters. What are the yeah. chapters? Tell me about what those are and how that works, Absolutely. how we can get involved. So like I would say it's like a cornerstone to who we are at, at, at EPI. So rewind again and, and try, time travel for a little bit with me. In 2011, when my dad was a CEPA, before we owned the Institute, we said, how can we bring the teaching of the national organizations into the local Cleveland, Ohio community, which is where I'm from? And so dad and I said, hey, let's start this chapter and bring like-minded advisors instead of nationally, bring them down locally so that we could do business with them every single day because we see them in the community. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, blast that out 10 plus times and we have up 30 chapters all across the United States and we're actually adding another six by the end of this year. So we'll nearly uh, 35 to 40 chapters and really they become... I would say educational and collaborative groups and networking groups locally. So those local folks can get together to roll up their sleeves and do a case study and, and do a deeper dive learn. They have topical meetings where you have more of a lecture-based uh, lecture based, uh, kind of uh, discussion. Um, and then you have networking, uh, networking time as well, where you're meeting like-minded advisors, but again, local to your community. So whether that's Cleveland or Florida or Utah or Colorado or anywhere in between, you can get a kind of a local flavor of your of your audience as well. And then you could take it a step further after you're kind of an established chapter. They're also doing owner facing events. So in October, for example, we have a, an owners forum in New York City. We have an owners forum in uh, Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, where now these local advisors are flipping the script and hosting these large annual events that bring in small to lower middle market business owners and they teach them the value acceleration methodology. Not only just a great awareness tool, but awesome an awesome business development tool because who are the owners going to turn to? It's going to be those people teaching them at the event. So it's really become, uh, talk about exit planning awareness across the United States. It's really become a network of, 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 of different folks. They, they meet typically on a monthly basis. So there's always activity and a lot of them still have a virtual option. So if I'm sitting in Cleveland, Ohio, and, and think the the Salt Lake City stuff is, is really cool, I could I might be able to tune in or the LA stuff or the Nashville stuff, whatever it might be. So it's really that's where you get the twenty thousand advisors kind of hanging out in EPI because they're all just interacting inside of these chapters and and things of that nature. But it's a pretty powerful platform and tool. I love the local chapters because not our not only are we part of an uh, international community, but we're part of a local yeah. community. And uh, in fact, I started, as you know, I started the Utah chapter. I'm a co-founder of that chapter. Yeah. And and the chapter has been such a great thing for bringing local people together where we can talk about exit planning. We've had these events with business owners. And the, in fact, a lot of um, business owners will attend the event. So I see those as being a, a great sure. thing on a, on a local level. So just a couple more things real quick. So annual summits, we're talking about, I've been to two now. And uh, yeah. you've got one coming up in Florida. Tell us a little bit about that and what, what that is. Who's yeah. invited? Yeah, so it is the Super Bowl of exit planning. It's literally, it's my favorite event of the year. Got People it. listening are interested. Just go to exitplanningsummit.com and you can check this out. It is for anybody, SEPA, non-SEPA, business leader, anybody that is interested in growing a better relationship with a business owner and helping them position for an eventual transition of their company. And we always say that there at the summit, the EPI doesn't stand for Exit Planning Institute. It stands for experiences, people, and innovation. So if you're looking to accelerate the growth of your own practice, you're looking to connect better with business owners, you're looking to deepen your knowledge in exit planning and have some fun with it, it is not a conference where you'll gather up a bunch of CE credits, but it is a conference where hopefully you're leaving super motivated and with nuggets that you can go home in your practice and and put in immediately. So uh, we are at the JW Marriott uh, Marco Island Beach Resort in Florida next year in April. You can learn all about it uh, at, at the website. But nevertheless, uh, I would say a very uh, transformational kind of experience. Uh, great, unbelievably great people and super creative and innovative time. I think time well spent. I do too. Like I say, I've been to two of them. So thank you so much for your time today. It's Scott Snyder yep. with an I. Uh, president of the Exit Planning Institute. And what's the website again where people can learn more? 
Yeah, just go over to earnsepa.com. It'll take you over to the EPI website. So SEPA is C-E-P-A. So earnsepa.com. All right. Well, sounds great. Thank you, Scott. And thank you for tuning in to M&A Murders and Accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you for attending our podcast. We invite you to join us for future episodes of M&A Murders and Accusations, the good, the bad, and the ugly of selling your business. You can also visit us at www.bsalesgroup.com or email Rick directly at rick at bsalesgroup.com.